Hey, man, I'm thinking about coming back to WoW. How's the game right now? Well, it's actually pretty fun. I mean, there's a few imbalances, but that's pretty normal, I guess. Are Red Paladins still broken? Uh, I guess you could say that. So, how do I catch up when I log in? Uh, dude, it's easy. Just farm 150k honor, which is about 1,000 2v2 wins. Then you will need 80 renown for soulbinds, and then 8 to 9 tour gas for one legendary. Hopefully, you only need one. Oh, and then you'll need like 15 to 20 hours of rift farming for conduits and sockets. Then you'll be ready to own. Ready to log in? Uh, yeah. I think I'm just gonna stick with League of Legends. With 9.2 still on the horizon, we got to thinking, what would it take to save WoW? By now, it's no surprise that the game is in need of some major redesign. And with Blizzard opening up the community council, Skillcapped is here to help represent you, the people, even though Blizzard didn't officially invite us. Anyway, today we teamed up with Venruki and collected the most popular ideas from the community to show the devs what needs to change in 9.2 in order to truly save PvP. First up is class design, which has seen some improvements since last expansion, but more work needs to be done. The biggest complaint heard around the community is that damage outside of cooldowns is just far too low, while damage with cooldowns is way too high. With some classes having passive tankiness, autoproc defensives, and insane mobility, it is nearly impossible to land kills unless a target is locked down while cooldowns are popped. This has created a game environment where the majority of your interactions in Arena don't really matter. If your cooldowns are not up, or if you don't have DRs ready to use on the enemy team, it is nearly impossible to land kills. And even if cooldowns are up, you sometimes have an impossibly small margin to actually land a kill if the enemy team has anything to block your attack. What matters the most is what you do during that small window in a game. So it doesn't matter if you're keeping up with your, you know, consistent damage rotation perfectly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you're not reacting to the cooldowns uh, during that short window in the game, uh, you're likely going to lose. The reason why cooldown based gameplay can feel incredibly draining is that it prevents you from doing anything that is off script. Right now, the best way to play Arena is to pick a kill target, decide who will CC who, and then perform the same setup go after go until there's nothing left from the enemy team. Although some people enjoy this playstyle, it can feel a bit limiting for others who prefer to play more intuitively. The importance of cooldowns has also created an arms race for add-ons like Weak Auras and Omni CD, where your decisions are largely dictated by your UI and not necessarily your game awareness. Of course, there's nothing inherently wrong with using these add-ons, or any add-on for that matter, but playing Shadowlands sometimes feels more like a reaction speed test than an actual game. Instead of paying attention to enemy buffs and positioning, you tend to care more about flashing icons in the top half of your screen. In many ways, this makes the game feel like you're interacting more with its interface than with the environment itself. What the hell was that? It, it, it's, it's one of those things where I don't really see weak auras going away, and I don't even know if, if they should. I wish they weren't in the game because I feel like it does take away some of the skill and awareness, but I also understand why people are so obsessed with them now. It's because if you aren't reacting or you don't notice something in a fraction of a second, uh, you're just dead. But outside of the relative strength of cooldowns, class balance isn't that bad. <gasps> of course, it is never perfect, and there are definitely specs right now that rise above the rest, but seemingly every class is capable of high ratings, even if it is a struggle. But we want to know what you think. What's your opinion on game balance right now? Do you think it's better or worse than other expansions? Let us know in the comments below. But what is arguably more important than class balance is system design, which is where things get a bit ugly. With each passing expansion, more systems are being added, removed, recycled, and repackaged to keep players grinding as long as humanly possible. While we might have had higher tolerance for the MMO genre in years past, it seems like there is a harsh limit to how much grinding the community can endure. As Holinka has even admitted in previous interviews, character progression seems fun at the beginning of the expansion when everyone is rising at the same rate, but in the middle or end of an expansion, it can seem like a massive deterrent. The Honor to Conquest gear grind is a perfect example of this and demonstrates a need to rethink how PvP progression should function in a game that is both an MMORPG and an eSport. Unlike other AAA titles, which have very low barriers to entry, World of Warcraft has multiple week-long grinds standing in your way if you want to have any sort of competitive experience. With item levels on PvP gear ranging from 213 to 259, there's a 46% power difference between players just starting out and players with max level conquest gear. Calling this a disadvantage doesn't really capture how bad it feels to have no gear. 
and in many ways, buying any piece of honor gear seems like a massive trap, since it will eventually be replaced with conquest, and you will need to grind honor to upgrade your conquest pieces anyway. This encourages you to either farm conquest on your main to convert into RNG loot boxes for your alts, while also trying to farm arena on undergeared alts while getting smashed by fully geared players. But gear isn't the only disadvantage new characters have, as renowned grinds, conduit levels, legendaries, and sockets still need to be farmed before you're truly on an equal playing field. These systems are so bloated that Venruki told us a story queuing with a ret paladin who didn't know that these systems exist. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna help this guy out. So I got him in my group and we played a few games and I was like, wow, um, what, you know, what's going on with this damage, blah, blah, blah. And I looked and he didn't, first of all, he didn't have a legendary. So he didn't have a legendary. I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, and then I realized he didn't even have a covenant. He didn't know what a covenant was. He didn't know the legendary system. And then uh, he started linking me. He's like, hey, man, I have these. How do I put them in my gear? He was linking me conduits that he thought were gems, the gems to put in his gear. He's like, how do I put these in my gear? I was like, oh, my God. So I actually tried my best to help him. You know, we, we got it. I literally got him in Discord. And uh, I found out. This is not a joke, by the way. I found out that after I told him, like, hey, man, you know, you got to go get your renown. Uh, you got to pick a covenant. Then you got to get the renown up. Then you got to get your conduits. Uh, then you guys should work on your legendary, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He literally quit. Uh, like, not joking. He didn't log on uh, after that. He stopped playing. So I, I think it's very jarring for new players to kind of get into the game right now. As much as they add these catch-up mechanics, which is fantastic, I think the new player experience is just way too overwhelming to the point that people don't even want to play. It's like, it's like I, I like to give the example of, hey, man, like, Hiking looks fun. I want to get into hiking and uh, someone drops you off at Mount Everest. Like you're not even going to try. Uh, that's basically what playing WoW PvP is right now. The question at this point should be why? Why are systems designed to have so many hurdles? Many of these game issues are not even new and players have been trying to make PvP more accessible for multiple expansions. Completing your character has gotten infinitely more complex over recent years as honor talent grinds in WAD became legendary grinds in Legion and then eventually Azerite grinds in BFA. What we now have is arguably the most complicated path to character completion which some have argued is a result of subscription based system. And while there are definitely players who enjoy these systems and the grind they offer, most competitive players see them as nothing more than an annoyance, something standing in the way of having fun. It's easy to forget that World of Warcraft PvP is a game, and games are meant to be played, but so much of the play in WoW is gated behind things that feel more like chores than an actual game. And over the years, when it comes to gearing, Blizzard has routinely claimed that there are many players who actually enjoy the gear progression in PvP. These players don't mind the chores because it makes their character stronger. But if you talk to any real player who takes PvP seriously, the most common complaint is that gear progression and item level upgrades seem completely pointless and make the game a worse competitive experience. We're not saying that there is not a single person who enjoys item level upgrades, but rather that Blizzard seems to be using a small part of the player base as an excuse to make gear progression as long as possible. Which again fits into their business model as a subscription based game. The longer the grind, the longer players need to stay subscribed. The unfortunate reality is that this doesn't seem to be working in the year 2022, as newer games are offering faster accessibility to their competitive modes. The sad question that needs to be answered is, why would anyone play World of Warcraft competitively? Don't get us wrong, we are all competitive players, but as more time gates are added, it becomes more difficult to make a convincing argument to play WoW when there are so many alternatives that provide a faster track to fun. So this begs the question, how can World of Warcraft PvP be saved? Many people have offered Warlords of Draenor and Legion as examples of what character progression should look like. WAD gave us streamlined honor and conquest sets with room for customization, while Legion gave us instant accessibility and balance at the cost of virtually no customizability. We think the answer lies somewhere in between, where there is entry-level PvP gear that is instantly accessible to all players, with conquest replacements only being a few item levels higher. That way, you can feel instantly competitive while also working towards small upgrades that only make your character three to five percent stronger. Obviously, a dedicated tournament realm would work too, where players could get instant access to any piece of gear, every conduit, and all covenants without needing to leave a single zone. And for those players who really want gear progression and rewards from PvP, cosmetics have always seemed like the obvious solution. 
PvP Tabard, Special Weapon Enchants, and Unique Transmog have always played the role of giving your character extra prestige without affecting your stats. If one thing is abundantly clear from history, it's that aesthetic rewards are actually enticing, and perhaps more important than we would like to admit. I mean, we all have some transmog or some mount that gives us tremendous pride, so why not capture these feelings as rewards for a more balanced competitive game mode? After all, the progression that most players actually care about is their skill, but with a long list of chores standing in the way between arena rating, it is quite sad to see players with a lot of potential abandon their skill grind entirely. If one thing seems certain, it's that WoW needs to desperately find a way to keep current players engaged while also being accessible to newer players who want to see what PvP is all about. And part of this, too, is providing a way for players to have fun by themselves while also encouraging social play. Some form of solo queue needs to bridge the gap that currently exists between queuing real 3v3 and not queuing at all. I'm sure we are not alone in admitting that many times we have no choice but to log off the game because we can't find partners to play with. And that really affects everyone, from challenger to rank 1. Nobody is immune to loneliness. But if 6 people are lonely at the same time, it's certainly better for them to play together in a solo environment than for them not to play at all. Is the solo shuffle system enough to solve this issue? Probably not on its own, but something is better than nothing. And if increasing PvP activity is a goal for the developers, it seems time to actually listen to what players have to say. And right now, they're saying that they want to press play, they want a solo queue system, and above all, they want respect. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. We are here with you to voice your concerns, and we really hope the developers listen. If you want to hear more of Enruki's thoughts on WoW gearing, be sure to check out his recent upload on YouTube. And if you want to help support the channel, please let us know by subscribing and turning all notifications on. It helps us a lot, and we thank you for your support. As always, though, thanks for watching. See you soon.